Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. All right, now the next thing I have to install is the camshaft because this is the girdle for the engine that I'm gonna be putting in. This particular girdle sits on the oil pan rail on the bottom of the engine. It ties into the rear main seal cap and the front cover. And since I, had, since I have to have the front cover in place to set up the girdle, I have to have the cam in first. So here's the cam for this engine. And the owner chose a flat tappet cam, not a roller. Went with a flat tappet. And there are some distinct differences you should be aware of when choosing a camshaft. And I know there's millions of articles on it, but here's some of the basics. Number one, if you're going to choose a flat tappet camshaft, it's not really flat. Uh, the lobes are actually on a slight angle. And we'll show you, talk about the lifters, but the lifters rotate around in this versus a roller, which is actually straight. The first consideration is this. The flat tappet cam, the lobes on the cam are shaped differently than a roller. These peaks on these, uh, the, the, on a flat tappet cam, the peaks are a little sharper and for racing, uh, for racing um, applications, the mass of the lifter is less because it doesn't have the roller on there, so you have less mass. So theoretically, it can move faster with less mass. But here are the considerations that you're gonna to have to think about. Number one, when you put this in, you put assembly lube on all the bearing, the, the bearing journals here, and you put molly lube on the lobes. When you put a roller cam in, you don't put any lube on any of the lobes. Molly lube on the lobes for the flat tappet camshaft. That's a critically important for braking. You also put it on the bottom of the lifter. It's critical so that when you start the engine for the first time to break it in, you have to break in this camshaft, unlike a roller. You don't have to break in a camshaft roller. This has to run for at least 30 minutes at 3,500 RPM to break in the lobes or to work hard in the lobes of the camshaft in order for it to give a long life. If you don't break it in properly, these lobes will get destroyed, the lifters will get destroyed, you'll be changing it in no time. So that's one of the big considerations right there. Break in, it'll take at least 30 minutes, and if you're doing it on a dyno, that's an, an additional 30 minutes, plus the gas, so there's additional cost for that. While this may be slightly cheaper than a roller, uh, there are braking considerations. So think about that when you're choosing your camshaft. Are the benefits really there for this versus what you're choosing, but the owner chose this, this is what we're installing. So let me show you what the lifters look like so you know how they roll around. We'll just go with that really quick, and then I'll put this in so we can get it installed. Now here is our flat tappet lifter. You can see the bottom, there's no roller on it. You compare this to a roller, they're very different in length, and you don't have the roller. If you look at the bottom, I try and get a reflection there. You can see how it's ground to a point. There is a point in the middle there, and if I take a straight edge and put it on here, you can see that this kind of rocks back and forth. So there's a crown built right into the bottom of this lifter, so when it's sitting on the lobe, and the lobe is ground at an angle, so this actually rotates inside the lifter hole, that's what allows it to lubricate. So it rotates as the camshaft is going around, this thing is rotating. I always say follow the manufacturer's recommendations. This loop came with the camshaft, and it says right here on the back, apply a liberal to the foot of each lifter. We'll do that when we put the lifters in later. Camshaft lobe and gear, the gear up front where the distributor engages. All right, start by putting a really long bolt on the front of your cam to help guide it in. And remember, assembly lube on the journals, the molly lube or the lube that came with the camshaft on all of the cam lobes. Now you don't want to mix up the two obviously, so I like to work one bearing at a time. I want to put it in, get one bearing set, and gently put it in without trying to hit the lobes on the bearing. Get it to the next bearing and set it there. Now I can work to the next one, very slowly putting it in. Sit it there. Now, very slowly to the next one. Let it sit there. And the last one is always a little tougher because you don't have a great big moment arm on there. So you want to try and lift and guide at the same time. So 
There we go. I'm looking in the back. I can see I'm almost lined up there. I'm gonna line up with the back one. There we go. And make sure it rotates nice and smooth, just like that. Next step is to put number one piston at top dead center, and the keyway has to be on the top. It's gonna end up being at position like about two o'clock. Finding top dead center is a fairly simple process. I have it as close as I think it's gonna be right now, and I'm gonna watch my gauge and I'm gonna rotate the engine with the piston coming up and wait till it stops. Okay, there it stopped. I think it went started to go backwards, so I'm gonna bring this to zero. Make sure it's on zero. Now I'll rotate it backwards. Okay, so it moved a little bit there, if you saw. Right there. Back a little bit. Tap it. See if it starts to drop. When it starts to drop, then I can go the other way. Seems like right there, top dead center. I got my key installed on the crankshaft and I'm quickly gonna test fit the lower gear to make sure it's all right. This is gonna be dot to dot on the gears. And you can see on this sprocket, there's a dot up here. This is matches up with the upper gear and the dot on this keyway lines up with the key here. There's also two other if you wanna have, it looks like four degrees retard or four degrees advanced. There's two different keyways. But I'm going dot to dot. That's going to go right here. And it's a little snug, but it's going to go on, it's going to go on nice. Got my timing set up here, dot to dot. Um, lube on the back of the cam gear, because this is a thrust face against the block, so that's lined up. So I'm going to try and line this up. And yes, it is very difficult to do this and film it at the same time. I'm still dot to dot there. Oops. Wiggle this on. I up my cam. Still dot to dot. Nope. One sprocket off. Not dot to dot. I'm off by one. Alright, line up the pin. Once I get it in place, we put one screw in here just to hold this so it doesn't fall off and to draw the cam out into the gear. And I check, I'm still dot to dot and still at top dead center. Now for the controversial part uh, the bolts. Loctite or no Loctite. I've been keeping track of all the comments on all the engine builds I've done way back for the last 10, 13 years. And everybody says, what, no Loctite? Well, these are ARP fasteners. You're supposed to be using the ARP lube. Uh, but if you do want to put Loctite on there, I will put it on there and use the blue. And you just need a little dab. Not a lot, just a teeny weeny bit. Because if you ever want to get that out, you want to be able to remove that. Now remember, Loctite. The Loctite, it, I'm using Loctite uh, 243, by the way. Um, Loctite does expire. I did a, an entire video about Loctite. If you want to know everything you need to know about Loctite, I got a video on that. So I'm just going to put a little drop on the thread, close to the lead thread. You don't need it all the way in the back. So we'll go all the way all the way down by hand and like I said a teeny weeny drop of Loctite in case you do have to take those apart you'll have to heat that up to break that Loctite make sure you torque it while the Loctite is still wet these go to 45 foot-pounds so I'll just get them all snug make sure they all run down nice and snug Yes, that is, uh, incidentally, for anyone asking, wondering, that is the air conditioning running in the background. 
86 degrees and brutally humid here in Buffalo, New York. And yes, in Buffalo, 86 degrees and 65% humidity is brutally hot to us. Okay. Check. You only need to click this once. Going like this does nothing but ruin your torque wrench and wear it out. All right, we're all set. If you have a cam button, you can put the cam button in now. This particular cam button goes underneath the washers for the cam uh, sprocket, so you have to put those underneath first. So whichever one you're using, put that in. Now before I put the front cover on, I want to lube up the chain, which means I'm just going to put some engine lube on the sprocket and rotate it. I just want to make sure my, my sprocket is lubricated, the chain is lubricated. Now you can put the front cover on, gasket first, wipe off your surface nice and clean with some lacquer thinner or uh, isopropyl alcohol and make sure it's completely grease free. And I'll put a light coating of this uh, Victor Renz Rhinosil. I used that uh, before on my rear main seal and just a light coating all the way around. I used to use high tack for this but I find that uh, this material is much easier to brush on. It's not as sticky but uh, it goes on nice with a brush. Sit my gasket in place go over the dowel pins first makes it easier to set it in place Rear main seal is pressed into the front cover. That's really not that difficult. And I got a light coating of the Remisil on the uh, gasket. Set this on here gently on my pins. Like that. And just put our bolts in. So what's the big deal about always returning the number one piston to top dead center and firing position? That's because this engine has an intermediate shaft. The intermediate shaft drops in, drives the oil pump on the outside of the engine, it goes into the gear on the camshaft, that's what drives the intermediate shaft, and the slot on the top is where the distributor engages. And when you drop this in, you have to have this in a certain position so that the, when you put the distributor in, the pointer on the distributor is a number one firing position. It makes it way easier when you go to start it up when this is timed right, and you can time it advanced a little bit so when you turn the key, it fires right up. That's, that's why having number one at top dead center is always important. I do it for all engines, but this one is a little more finicky because it's intermediate shaft. If you're off by one tooth, it could be a matter of uh, 15, 20 degrees on a distributor. That's why it's important. We'll continue on with, the, with uh, the girdle on this one next. Now that I have the timing cover on, thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.